well, here's the uh, circuit. I finally started to get there. Um, let's zoom in a bit. Um, oh my god, I know. Middle mouse button, I keep forgetting. So I finally up well, I updated my pad PC, well, my design spec PCB. Um, so I had to redo the diagram twice, actually, because I did it and then I had to redo it and um, just zoom out a bit. A minute. Right, oops, mouse button's a bit dodgy. So anyway, I've got the circuit um, almost there and uh, I've been actually designing the PCB layout at the moment and uh, Ask me at FET, that's the one I was going to show earlier. And I've been filling in the values, so most of the values are pretty accurate now. Um, but you know, like these, these things, as you as you design them yourself, and you're not working from a diagram. I actually created the diagram myself, so um, it's all off kind of top of my head, really. So as I do this, I kind of make changes uh, as I go along. Um, Actually, let me get the other mouse because this mouse is really naff and there's a problem with the button on it. Um, right, this, oops. That's better. Right. Actually, this mouse has got problems as well and something. Wi Fi interference keeps making it jump now and then, but it's not as bad as the other, the other one's just got a bad button on it. Um, Right, so I know this is the circuit diagram. And that's not a bolt at the bottom there. Uh, it's a BC109. It's always hard with the resolution on the. Oops, on YouTube. <coughs> because things tend to get pixelated. So I'm just trying to. Um, that's the preset, that's the uh, multi turn preset there. 50k preset, and that's connected to the wipe is connected to ground uh, down here. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, um, <clears throat> and just two resistors. Um, I actually put um, 33k, but I don't think it. It really is too critical actually because I'm using a 50k part of the bomb. You just have to balance the um, as long as these two are the same and as long as um, they're not too high a value. Because if these about these resistors here, if these two are too high in value, then the differential voltage across this preset is going to be smaller. Um, so by having these resistors. Low value, you get a greater change for the um, um, non inverting and inverting, oops, and inverting input. So it really depends <coughs> how much of a differential one wants. It, oh, it, that's all dependent as well on the resistor that's here. I'm using a one ohm resistor so I can get a reasonable amount of shift on the um, differential compensation capacitor that's nothing critical or just 100n i think i'm using and that's op amp the comp one is the lm308n that's this one and the um that's the bias resistor that supplies the lm308n power supply it's uh, uh, 1.6k and that's the one that goes down to a Zener diode, which is 9.1 volts, and uh, and it keeps the voltage, so it doesn't go too high. <clears throat> As the voltage increases on the circuit, because the voltage is fluctuating because of solar power, um, it causes some unwanted um, um, variations in stability. So the Zener diode simply trims the voltage at 9.1 volts and keeps the voltage constant so we don't have problems with the adjustments that's all i'm not using a regulator because you know a voltage regulator um is a little bit overkill for when you're just powering an op amp and some transistors you don't 
as an a diode is good enough really for the job. Um, I know a lot of people use regulators these days, but regulators consume more power actually than what one might be using. So anyway, that's the schematic. That's pretty much it really. Um, now I had a lot of work to do with the <coughs> board design. Um, I actually spent nearly all day working it out, and a lot of this is filled copper. You know, the um, this is all filled copper. This part here, and I've just used lines and things to, um, yeah. That's why I'm clicking on it, and that's just the filled copper area. So I don't waste a lot of copper. I'm using it as screening as well. It will help to remove transients and interference. You know when it turns on and you can see the components outlined where the positions of the components go in yellow and um, the IC goes there and that's the Q2 down at the bottom here and um, these are the resistor values there's the LED but I'm actually gonna I don't know I'll probably have the, I probably will have the LED on the board but if I want to mount it externally I can do <clears throat> um, C1, R5, Q3, R7, um, oops, uh, and uh, that's actually, C7 is actually the 50k pot, I don't know why they call it a C, when it's actually a potentiometer, but this is the actual, um, this here is actually the potentiometer. In that end, the middle pin is grounded there. <coughs> um, right. Q4. Um, I've just woken up a while ago, so I'm a bit half asleep. There's one of my Zener diodes up here. Actually, the patterns. The, the prints are a bit big for the zeners I'm using actually. I'm using smaller zeners, but it doesn't really matter. I'd had quite a bit of space on the board. The boards are actually a lot smaller than what they appear on here. They look big, but on this circuit it looks huge, but it's not. It's actually kind of small. <coughs> um, well, you can you can gauge that roughly by the, the IC itself, the off, the off amp there, uh, oh, here. If I can click on the damn thing, uh, right, you can gauge roughly the size of the board by the op amp itself, it's tiny. Um, and then if I go to 3D, uh, this is a representation, a 3D virtual representation of what the board's going to look like. Well, it's using generic components in here, but for some reason, the op amp, uh, sorry, the preset. The multi-turn preset doesn't have a little screw on the top, but, but that this little red thing here, but there's only one big red thing on there, and that's that's the trimmer. And obviously that you can see the IC there. There's Q2 down here. Um, there's Q3 over there on the left, and there's Q4. My circuit just actually tripped over there. Um, I'm not using my camera at the moment, I'm using the desktop screen grab, so and there's the what's the board's gonna be like once I uh, etch it and all that. So um, Yeah, um it's always nice to see what it's gonna look like before you actually do etch. Because uh yeah, you can correct mistakes and uh, move things around Gives you a good idea of what it's going to be like. It's a bit like watching Star Wars actually at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So, zoom out again. So that's pretty much what I've got to so far. I'm just going to. I'm just not going to etch it yet, though, because I'm going to have a few more days of testing. Um, just going to run the actual circuit on the experimental board and make sure it's all working properly. And then, uh, then I'll go.
go to making the actual board itself. Oh, I actually, um, I forgot to put some pads, connection pads, and so I decided just to use some copper fill. So this bit down here, and get to it. Oops, too far. Right, this bit here, there's a big green bit in the middle. It looks like a plain field, but it's not. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be drilling for a connection for some wires, and the wire is going to be on the other side there as well. So I'm just going to hook the wires in there, and, uh, and I've got another one on the other side at the top there. And that's where I'm going to put the wires. Yeah, you know, the power supply input and output wires. Um, and there we go, that's where I put them there. Um, <clears throat> there's no point in being too fussy about neatness on this because it's all ad, ad hoc and experimental, and uh, I really don't. I mean, I'll probably build a better one at some point, but I just want to see how this does. And it's going to be coupled with the relay at the moment, uh, it's going to drive the relay circuit board that already exists. But later on, I might actually improve. I might actually add the um, a MOSFET power driver to switch power on and off instead. But the reason I decided not to do it this time was because I kind of like the relay um, behavior. Because the relay won't kick in if the voltage is like around six volts, and it, it the relay itself has some. Um, Use, useful um, behaviors in that it will automatically kick out anyway to around 5 volts because the the latching mechanism can't hold on below 5 volts and that's kind of useful um, because it means that it's not going to just dry the discharge the cook super pass it's beyond the point where the circuit remembers exactly how many times it's been triggered and everything so I thought I'll leave the relay in for now see how it goes uh, so this this circuit's just going to run the other board that's already manufactured, and uh, there's a there's a connection on here to send out to the relay trigger circuit, the five 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 timer, and all that. And, um. Yeah. Right. Okay. So. So anyway, that's the three D, and uh, I'll just center this. Back in the middle, yeah. So anyway, that's where we are so far. Anyway, thank you for watching. Actually, I just realised I actually had the FET. I had this, the part number, serial number on there instead of the actual uh, designating device ID. Anyway, I got the PDF up. And uh, let's just get this sort of tip fits in here because it's kind of important. Because this FET, uh, oh god, what have I done now? I'm trying to find the bottom of it. Hang on a minute. Um, oh, this I don't believe this stupid mouse. I don't believe it. Hang on, battery just died on me. <sighs> Put another battery in. I've always got one handy. Mm. Right, um, right. The actual FET, it's a BS, not a BD. God, Bennett. Why do you have to make me. Every time Windows updates, it makes everything smaller and it's harder to see stuff. Anyway, it's a BS 170. Um, there we go. Right, and this is actually the. FET that I'm using. So anyway, I went in the the circuit board um, <clears throat> uh, device library, and I searched for BS one seventy. So I just updated that. Oh damn it! Oh, come over here. Right, here we go. So I actually updated that just since I made that last video. 
because I, I thought, oh, I never did check to see if I got source and drain the right way around. And I went looking, I thought, hang on, there's something wrong here. And I went and searched the PDF, I couldn't find it. I thought, hang on, I've got the wrong number off the damn thing. Because it's something I don't really work with, the FETs, very often. But anyway, I found it, BS170. It was actually on, uh, I went and checked the eBay listing. And I went when I ordered it, and it's actually a BS170. So anyway, and I did have the source and drain the right way around. So that's good to know. So it doesn't really matter. The previous video I just made, it... it doesn't really matter all that much because the as long as the, the source and drain are the right way around and gate obviously but I wanted to make sure I had the gate in the right pos position on the circuit board obviously because uh, if it was on the left hand side instead of in the middle then it would mean putting the transistor in cockeyed so um, I got that fixed and um, Come back here. Right, I've got that fixed, so it actually looks right now. And I had to redo the design. Let's just refresh. You'll see some, ch some. You might see some changes happening here when I refresh it. There we go. <laughs> Not a lot of change actually. <laughs> so I think all we saw change there was the Q4 just jumped over. Um, but yeah, if we go back to the copper side. Uh, BS is there, right? Oh, hang on a minute. Have I got this right upside down. Confusing. This is hard to um, do this. Just get this over here. It's all back to front, you see. When you do it on here, it's it's all upside down. And it gets kind of confusing. All right, but just. Move over a bit. Alright, you'll notice that um, some of the copper, actually, if I refresh this now, if I just refresh. Oh, nothing happened. Ah, that's weird. Maybe I've got to reopen it. But anyway, I just filled in some copper. Uh, oh, yeah, I did leave that bit blank. Um, if I go back to the thingy. What I was doing was I was just refilling, I was just putting this copper, um, that, that looks better now. Uh, There's just screening really. Um, if I stick Q4 over here, uh, then I get some, uh, add some copper into this section here. You'll see what I mean when I go back to the um, 3D representation. If I refresh now, you should see that up here. There we go, it's down here. So I just actually filled in that area. So I'm just basically, the less copper you can etch off the board, the better really, because the copper actually adds to strength of the board. Plus it also screens and you're not chucking it all down the drain when you're doing the, when you're not supposed to chuck ferric chloride down the drain anyway but I'm just saying it's always handy to save the environment so having as much copper left on the board as possible is always good really and plus if you make changes later on it makes it possible to use these copper pads as uh, jumpers you know for example if I wanted to make a modification to the circuit and I decided that I wanted to um, instead of having this this leg of the resistor here, oops, to do that. Instead of this leg of the resistor going directly down to ground, which is down here, um, right. Instead of having that resistor going, oops, damn it. Oh. Instead of having this resistor going, this leg of the uh, FET going all the way down to ground, it's, it makes it possible to actually cut the track here you know and then have a resistor going from <coughs> here to this pad and then linking that pad to ground so it, may, it means it's possible to make modifications later on down the line if you decide you wanted to and um, also capacitors and things like that so I mean extra copper in is a good thing to have when you're doing circuit boards 
Um, yeah, I'm back on the dodgy mouse again. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> I'll just join this on to the other video um, in a minute. So, anyway, it looks pretty good. I did have a few things to move around, but there's not a lot. You can just wind back to the early one and see, look at Q4 and see how, how it's changed. Shouldn't really be a lot of difference, actually. I think the pins were pretty much the same, but I couldn't do the auto route thing because um, the co all the copper fill that I put in was interfering and it's blocking it. Because uh, um, Design Spike does actually have auto route, so if I take this if I take this track out here, um, it's no longer connected. If I right click on there and go to uh, auto route. No, it didn't do it look, see. Ah, it's because I've got a lot of copper in there. Let's try this one. Auto root. There we go, let's put it back. So you can see what I mean. Um and I can change the style. Um can't see the top of um uh, like single moon. Oh, it's made it smaller look. Change style. Signal nom, nominal. Oh, change style to power man. Now this is going to be chunky. There we go. <laughs> Got a nice chunky track in there now. Actually, I can leave that because it's actually better. It gives the resistance a bit more uh, to hold on to. Um, let's see. Apply to all segments on that. Yeah, we go. That looks even stronger. It's a good idea if you can get away with thicker tracks. Um, as uh, acts as a heatsink as well. So that's good. Uh, anyway, enough of the me waffling. I'm at ten minutes already. Uh, thanks for watching.